first panelist, D Dimple Amjera. Welcome to the show. She is a commissioner for the Charlotte Housing Authority. Mushtaba Muhammad, attorney for the for the Council for Children's Rights. He's also a community a community advocate. And Lula Duwale, county commissioner candidate for District 2, just filed and 28 years old. Quite impressive. And thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for letting me get through your names. I was about to butcher them here on television. And I apologize for that, but I'm so thrilled to have you. And it's so great to talk about young people and politics and young people and the issues that are going on because there's certainly the stereotype that the millennial generation is not engaged not active not involved in the community that we're that the, the the millennials are stuck to their smartphones and don't care about what's going on and you guys are examples of what the millennials are really doing what impressive millennials are really doing let's talk about how you are trying to really debunk that stereotype that myth about millennials and i'll start with you lula well, I'm trying to debunk it by filing for county commissioner in District 2. I'm actually running for office, and I'm very excited about it. But, you know, the perception of young people is that we're lazy, we're spoiled, we're entitled, when in actuality, in reality, we're just the opposite. We're passionate, we're driven. We do things that our hearts are committed to. And, yes, we might have a cell phone in our hand, and, yes, we might be addicted to social media. I know. I'm obsessed with Twitter, I'm obsessed with Snapchat. However, we're building this community online. We're building this support online for other young people. So if you do see me on Twitter, if you do see me on Snapchat, it's because I'm connecting with other people where I probably would have never been able to connect with before. And are you campaigning using social media? Is it a different way to even campaign? I know that other candidates certainly are, are doing it, but as a younger candidate, you're probably better equipped to campaign on social media. You know, I've been using social media now for quite some time. I went to Philip O'Berry Academy of Technology, so I'm, wow. I'm used to social media. I grew up with it. Um, I love it. I love being able to connect with people through social media, um, and it's given me a platform I've never had before. You know, being able to connect some with someone across seas or just even across the county to meet up and talk about issues that are important to them is something that I don't take for granted, and it's something that I'm comfortable with, and I understand the importance of it. And what about you, Mishtaba? You are a practicing attorney. You're very well rooted in this community, doing some really amazing work. What are you? What do you feel when you hear the stereotype that goes along with millennials, and how are you trying to change the perception? So first off, thanks for inviting us. Thanks for having us on the show. Happy New Year to everyone. Um, John F. Kennedy said it best. He said, uh, "Change is the law of life." Um, he said, "Those that miss out and only look at the past and the present are missing out in the future." And the millennials are the future. Um, uh, we're pushing boundaries. Uh, we're bringing uh, issues to the forefront. We're, we are up to our cell phones and tablets. However, we're utilizing that as a mechanism to um, talk about the issues. Uh, the media is often covering more and more issues socially driven by Twitter and Facebook. Um, I'm a Charlotte, Charlotte attorney. I work at the Council for Children's Rights. I'm actually a defense attorney there. I, re I represent our Charlotte's children. Um, I, myself as a millennial, a young person, as a father as well, uh, Two, two young baby boys. Congratulations, you Thank just you so I, had your second. I just had my second boy, uh, Hamza, so we're excited to have him. So we've had, we've had our hands full, but the work continues, uh, especially for me. I became a public interest attorney coming out of law school, especially working for children because children are our future. Yeah. Um, if we invest our energy and our resources in children, we're going to have a brighter future. Um, raise the age is an important issue. Uh, North Carolina is one of two states where 16 and 17 year olds are still treated uh, as adults in the criminal justice the system. Once they get felonies and criminal records, it's much more difficult to get financial aid for college, much more difficult to get a job. Those are important issues that we're addressing. Uh, we're making sure therapeutic services are put in place to help children and families to, to better their lives. And then working as a community advocate to talk about important issues. You know, Lula and I worked together on the Syrian refugee issue where Pat, Governor Pat McCrory basically said that he wanted uh, to put a halt to that. To that. Um, we believe that it's against American values. It's not the traditional uh, that America's followed. We've always welcomed people. We don't ever shut the door on people. Um, and we can hopefully get into it later, but yeah, there's a absolutely. process put in place, and there's plenty of other great things that we're doing and we're looking forward to do. So. That's what's so great is to get the take on the current political climate from the younger generation. And Dipple, before we get started with some of the issues, let's talk about how you feel about this stereotype that goes with uh, this millennial group. Yes, I do agree that uh, young millennials have, uh, when it comes to showing up at the polling places, let's be honest, in the primary, 
out of 36% of the population uh, of the millennials that we have, only 5% showed up at the polling place in the primary, which is very disappointing because I'm part of the millennial generation. But again, I have to lead by an example. So I started getting more involved in the community that encouraged not only millennials, but also other generations to get involved, be active in the society, uh, and make your voice be heard. And I serve in the Charlotte Housing Authority as a board of commissioners because I'm passionate about affordable housing, homelessness, upward mobility. Charlotte being at the bottom when it comes to upward mobility 99 out of 100 counties this is very disappointing to me because now i consider charlotte as my house as my hometown so affordable housing i wanted to talk about affordable housing if that's okay uh, sure. It's actually an issue that we're going to, to get to because it's something that I want to talk about that's important here in this community and something that I know that you work to make sure is something that's accessible for people. But before we get into um, to that actual discussion about affordable housing and upward mobility, you actually brought up a great point with the Syrian refugees and the work that you have done. Um, Pat McCrory's stance, Governor Pat McCrory's stance on that. Certainly we also hear a lot of strange discussions here um, now because of uh, our, you know our candidate um, Donald Trump running for president and saying that we should ban all Muslims and that we should make them wear something that shows that they are mm -hmm. Muslims. And I, my question is, as young people, as you're watching some of these discussions happen and as you're seeing these people running for re-election as Governor McCrory is or running for president and doing well in the polls as Donald Trump is, how frustrated that must make you feel, but also how does that prevent young people from going to the polls? And I'll start with you, Mishtaba. Um, I'll be honest with you. When we hear stuff that things that Donald Trump is saying, obviously politicizing certain issues, um, and we hear disappointingly our own state governor jumping on that bandwagon uh, along with other Republican governors, it's, it's very disheartening. Um, like I told you earlier, that's not what, what America's about. And when millennials hear these types of issues, it kind of turns us off. But then we have to, because we're much more open-minded, we're much more accepting. Uh, we've grown up uh, with diversity around us, and we welcome that with open arms. Um, so when we hear these defensive things for politics, for political gain, it's very disappointing, which is why we have to roll up our sleeves and talk about these issues. And and help Patrick Governor McCrory understand that with the Syrian refugees crisis there are fundamental security measures put in place let's not re-victimize these people who are escaping war-torn regions 50 percent more be, more than 50 percent being young children mm -hmm. uh, widowed mothers elderly um, those that are uh, escaping persecution from uh, for being LGBT all right these are the important things that we need to recognize because we're the united states as far as the ban on muslim americans i've said it before i'll say it again um it's a very sort of scary and nervous time for muslim americans when they hear those types of sure. things um it harkens back to world war ii 1930s um basically our muslims gonna have to wear a crescent like our jewish brothers and sisters had to wear the star of david um donald trump talks about putting muslims on a database i mean these are scary times when this is, where, this is the year 2015 and sad history sometimes repeats itself which is the reason why we have to be in the forefront and speak out against these things because today it might be Muslim Americans and Syrian refugees tomorrow it could be anyone else it could be one of us um, who is who's dealing with these um, disappointing issues uh, well, you're running for office but you've also been a community organizer what do you say to young people to get them to get to the polls to speak out against these issues that that are so important to young people but aren't necessarily voiced by some of our current leaders right and to follow up on some of Muslim about uh, comments, we know Donald Trump to be a celebrity. He's an entertainer. That's what he does. We understand that. But it's not so much what he's saying, but it's those he's activating at these rallies who are going go who are going to go out into these communities and maybe talk poorly about a Muslim person or maybe attack a Muslim person. Those are things that we don't want to happen. Earlier this month, when I reached out to Mushtaba, I said, there's something that we need to do in the community. Our elected officials aren't speaking out, so it's up to us in order to speak out and say, these aren't our American values. These aren't things that we support. You know, I reached out to Ray McKinnon. I reached out to Mushtaba Mohammed, and I told him, I said, let's do something about it. And immediately, millennials stood up. We came together. We unified. Over 100 people showed up at the rally, as well as media affiliates. 
This is what's so important about having a panel like this here on Flashpoint today to get more of that message out to folks and to get young people activated. We have to take a quick commercial break, but we want to continue this discussion, but also talk a little bit about upward mobility, talk about housing here in the Charlotte area. We have a lot to cover this morning on Flashpoint, and we have a great panel to cover it with. Stay with us. We will be right back.